we're just gonna talk about like in general, like if there is currently a well on the property, things to know, like well depth, pump rate, water quality, filtration system, stuff like that. And then for those that are thinking about like building and what you wanna know all about like locating and drilling and, and everything that comes with that, stay tuned. All right, everyone, now that we've got Nicole O'Shea joining us here, <laughs> let's dive in to our wells. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here today. Again, my name is Nicole O'Shea, and I work for the National Park Service. Any of the views and opinions expressed by me today are mine solely. I'm here on my personal time, and they do not represent anything. Uh, views of the National Park Service, the Department of the Interior, or the U.S. government as a whole. So I'm coming here as a water professional. I have a master's in hydrology and a background in geology and environmental science. I used to work right here in Evergreen, a well service company. Right now with Park Service, I work more on larger scale uh, water supply projects, water quality projects in our national parks. They are near and dear to my heart, um, but I would love to bring it back to some smaller system residential wells. Here in Evergreen, provide you some really good information for homeowners. Did we get the best resource out there to help our <laughs> Ever. our audience? Ever. Learning everything they need. Is this going to be the best YouTube video for wells and water sources in the mountains? All right, well, Nicole, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Again, how do we get water in the mountains? Absolutely. So hydrology is a really neat science. Hydrology is the study of water and water's movement, its distribution, and how we're going to use it everywhere along the Earth's surface. So when it comes to residential wells here in Evergreen, we're pulling from underground, you know, groundwater, fractured granite, bedrock. That's where our water source is coming from. We're dealing with something different here in Evergreen. So the fractured granite, there's no water within the rocks. It's all between the spaces between the rocks. If there's fractures and faults, that's where your water's gonna reside is in those little crevices and cracks. So a little different beast, a lot less water up here, but something we can still drill for and have successful wells to provide water for homes, lawns, irrigation, livestock, everything that we need for domestic purposes. So how is the water so clean? And is it just because it's going through less crap to get to us or? Yeah, so groundwater generally has pretty good quality. Up here in the mountains, you're mostly dealing with contaminants that might be naturally occurring in the rock. So there is some filtration, mostly for like bacterial and microbial, and, but there are still some water quality concerns that we will need to address in residential wells. So let's jump on in and talk about what water rights you have, if any, but also what you can use your water for specifically here in the mountains. As the new homeowner or new builder, what you can do with the water that's beneath your land. So when it comes to well permits in this area, it's pretty straightforward. As a residential well, you're not gonna be subject to the prior appropriation system or the first in time, first in right, which is the water right system for all of Colorado and actually much of the, most of the Western US. What you need as a domestic residential well is just a well permit. You know, that's gonna allow you to construct the well, install equipment and start using that water in your home. A couple different types of well permits. I think the most important thing is that your well permit specifically says what you can use water for, what you can't. So if it's just a domestic household permit, then you can use water within one single household unit on the property. If you have allowances to use the water for irrigation or livestock, those have to be specifically listed on the permit in order for you to use the water for those purposes. So as a residential well homeowner, you don't need a specific water right to use it. And that's mainly because about 90% of that water you extract from the ground and use in your home is gonna go back into the ground through your wastewater treatment system. So that septic tank or your leach field, a lot of it's non-consumptive. And can you upgrade or change your permit then, I'm guessing? Yeah, you can yeah. apply for different uses. You have to get like a um, change approval from the state. And is that expensive or timely? Like... I wouldn't say it's necessarily really expensive okay. to change your permit. It's oh. like do some processing fees though. Of, 20 to hundred dollars. Well, that's interesting because I didn't actually know that as well Nicole is that on that permit specifically mm -hmm. it will state what you can use your water for. 
I mean, I've been here 30 years and I didn't know that. So. Yeah, it varies by hmm. property for, you know, what that permit is going to have allowed usage for. But just make sure to chat with the state, you know, reach out to them with questions, check on their website. If you're unsure of what your permit is or where to find it or, or what you can use your water for, you know, the state is some, has some super helpful folks, the Division of Water Resources, that would be more than happy to answer your questions, I'm sure. And, and well, Steph, when it comes to like permits, it's not a county thing and it's not a like a city thing. You're working with the state. You're working with the yeah. state, yes. So this is different questions about water rights. So like the Colorado Compact, so that deals more with the water rights to these other states on the western like slope. Yes, correct? Colorado River Compact is what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Part of it is a prior appropriation system. So okay. somebody gets to the water and they start using it and they put it to beneficial use they can get their water right decree through the water court mm. and have, okay, I am a senior water rights holder, this is my water, and I get to use it before anybody else does. So uh, a more junior water right coming later in time, the senior water right has first dibs and mm. they get to use their full allotment of water before the junior water right actually gets any water at all. So, hey, Nicole, does depth matter? <laughs> That's a great question, Josh. In fractured bedrock like we are up here, I've seen a whole host of wells. You can have a 100 foot deep well that meets the family's needs of water. You can have a 1,000 foot deep well that is struggling to meet the needs. So depth really doesn't matter. Obviously, the deeper you go, the more likelihood you have of intercepting fractures in the rock that may contain water. But I think the most important thing is the pump rate of the well or the production rate or the yield. How does one know? Like I said, well depths vary, but the production rate, when the driller drills the well, they'll provide an estimated production rate. And that is just during the drilling process. But what you can do afterward is actually conduct a, a pump test. So getting a, either a temporary or your permanent well pump installed at the bottom of the well, pump the water and actually see what the yield is. And this is done by a licensed pump contractor, maybe a consulting firm or whoever you'd like to hire to do this work. And even one gallon per minute could be enough for a household. You yeah. know, it's about 75 gallons per person per day is the estimated usage for a family of four. That's about 300 gallons per day. If you have a well, let's say 400 feet, that produces one gallon per minute. There's 1,440 minutes per day. So when you think about it, you have enough water. Depends on the time of usage. If you can't do your laundry and the dishes and shower and maybe do all that at one time, but if you spread out your usage, practice some water conservation, that should be a perfectly adequate well for you and your family. Let's talk about that. So one, when we have homes inspected, uh, we do not use the same inspectors that we use for like Denver Front Range properties because mm -hmm. our inspectors do test the well. We want to test the pump rate and quality and you know if they don't do it correctly, I haven't experienced this on my own, but my understanding is when they're testing it, if they're not getting enough water through, you could burn up your, your motor? Yeah, okay. you can. So pumps are cooled by water flowing past them. Okay. Yeah, their motors require a constant stream of water moving past the pump motor in order to keep it cool. So some wells unfortunately are we call running dry. If there's not enough water moving past that pump, hmm. you can potentially risk it to, to burn up and overheat and fail. But luckily there are devices that you can install in your house, like a run dry protection system. A couple hundred bucks, it will automatically turn off your well pump if it senses that that water level is too low. And so hmm. you're not gonna run your well without enough water and potentially burn up your pump. What's the quality of the water that's in there? So water quality can vary quite widely, um, just from well to well. Even if the property next door has great water, your property could have different water quality. When you get your well either first constructed or you first move into your house, it's really important to get your water quality tested. So yeah. private residential wells actually aren't regulated by the Safe Drinking Water Act or the EPA. Mm -hmm. It's the responsibility of the homeowner to get your own water tested because no one's really gonna do it for you. So if you go to the state website or local well water service companies, they can provide water quality testing for a whole range of things. I'd say first and foremost would be bacteria. So total coliform and E. coli is one of the most important things to test for every year. And then you can do more in depth testing like nitrate, fluoride, uranium, and gross alpha beta, which are like radionuclides, test for radon, and there are treatment options for most if not all of anything that's found in your water, like hardness. What does hard water mean? 
on your well. Yeah, hard water gonna be a mix of minerals that have just naturally leached into the water from the ground. It could be, you know, a mix of uh, calcium, magnesium, uh, minerals that are in your water and can be treated out using like a conditioner or a softener system for your home. Okay. You know, I tell people like, one, we're always going to get the well tested uh, for, you know, water quality and the pump rate. But if you have a low pump rate, it's not the end of the world, right? We have things like cisterns. You're yeah. Talking about. A great option is a storage tank system. I consider storage tanks to be above ground tanks, usually plastic in your basement or your mechanical room. And they can be anywhere from 100, maybe 300 or 500 gallons volume. And that's just gonna take a little bit of the pressure off your well directly. So that's normally a sign when we see like one of these like sitting in the basement or the garage or something, they usually a sign that they have a low yield you said yeah you have, yield in the well yield. or you just have a really large home that you need a water storage tank system in order to provide adequate pressure to all the faucets mm -hmm. in the house random question if you're a prepper and you have a giant cistern can those just sit for a long time without like getting any type of bacteria or anything like that technically they can okay. yeah you should keep them out of the sun because okay. if they're in direct sunlight that can foster the growth of more bacteria okay i'd say if it was sitting there for three years you're probably going to want to get it tested maybe okay. even chlorinate it before you drink that water but if you have no water you it's better yeah. than no water. It's better than no water. If you're water a prepper, though. it's yeah. like, is there even a remote chance like you could have bad gases or like cancer producing elements in water up here? Yeah, there are. There are. So a lot of it is naturally occurring, uh, like radon, uranium, and these other called gross alpha beta. There's two things that we test for. They're called radionuclides, and those naturally occur in granite up here. So it's just basically um, components of the rock that degrade and leach into the water. Totally natural process, not preventable by a homeowner at all, but mm. that can happen in can those wells. Can those be tested for they and can. can they be mitigated? Yes, they can be tested for huh. and treated. Um, the tests are a little bit more expensive than your just basic water quality tests, um, radon system or remote reverse osmosis or other treatment options. Huh. Mm. All of those can be treated. Yeah, they can be. Here so, in the mountains. Yeah, there's uh, different levels at which whether whatever measurement unit you're using, milligrams per liter, peak or curies per liter, whatever that level is, treatment is going to reduce that level. So it's not necessarily going to reduce it to zero, but there are... To like, a healthier. To a healthy healthier. standard. So it's important because each well is going to be different, each yes. water quality. And so important to get that report of what's in your water and have the pro proper filtration and just knowing when you're gonna to need to be changing those out. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that's a service that a lot of well service companies provide is annual filter changes and maintenance on water treatment systems. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that I've heard and I just wanna confirm is like one, making sure that the, the ground is away from the wellhead or that's how you could get like animal bacteria or E. coli yes. in there. And I heard that you don't wanna put like a little like, little like house or a hut around your wellhead because it needs to get air in there, is that? Not necessarily air, but okay. that's a great question that you bring up. So there's well construction standards. She likes my question. Are, <laughs> <laughs> there's well construction great. standards that are set by the state that your well driller and when they construct the well should be following. Um, so it's not something you should have to worry about, but your well head should be at least 12 inches off of the ground surface. So what mm -hmm. ground surface, it should be poking up out of the ground purposefully. Mm -hmm. That's to prevent um, any surface water from coming in and providing a conduit to contaminate the groundwater. Mm -hmm. uh, the ground should be sloping away from your well heads so you don't have like a pool of water collecting right at the mm -hmm. wellhead. You want a nice secure cap so you can't get animals or droppings yeah. or any anything in that well. You want to keep it a closed system. And I'd say for the, the well house, you know, you could, but it's mostly an access issue for, mm -hmm. you know, well service companies that want to come in and uh, if they have to do maintenance on the pump or replace the well pump, they need to come in with a truck, be able to back up right to the wellhead and actually have a boom that extends over top of it. So if you have a well house, you're gonna to have to have an access port or something mm. in order to have this large strain come directly over top of the wellhead. Gotcha. And it's just easier if there's not a house at all so that the technicians can move freely, there's plenty of space and they don't you know, uh, damage any property and don't put rocks around it. We just need to make sure it's accessible to service and for maintenance. And we talk a little bit, do you know much about like community wells? Cause I noticed there's, where was I? I was, yeah, so on Estes, they have a community of like oh. 10 homes on those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On one big 
well. Yeah, community wells could just, they probably larger capacity wells, and mm. those probably feed to like some kind of underground cistern that there could be multiple pumps inside that cistern that deliver water to each home, but they're not necessarily a bad system. I, it, you know, somebody should be keeping up with water quality just like a normal well. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the community's. It's um, probably a little HOA. A little or HOA yeah, like an yeah. HOA or something. Mm -hmm. So I just as long as you're up on water quality, it might be a better for finances. You know, you're not responsible for a well or the pump replacement maybe as a shared cost versus all on one homeowner. So yeah, to each their own as far as preference. Okay. But not really a benefit or a deficit to that homeowner. If the well is adequately producing water for that community, then I don't think they would really notice the difference. Okay. If it's working for you and you've, you know, maybe talked to other members on that well and yeah. it's working for them or talk to your real estate agents. And, yeah, that's what and, we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I, I have a little, you know, personal experience about being up here in Evergreen. You know, I've been born and raised here. And I just remember during, you know, drought seasons, they actually tried to restrict us as homeowners from using the amount of water we were allowed. There was one time in 2005 where at my house for almost a month, we had to ship water up hmm. from Denver. Do you know if, if you have a low producing well, if mm -hmm. you don't have a cistern, if you don't have storage tanks, what is your recommendations for homeowners here in the mountains then bad drought seasons? What ends if we can't access water? Yeah, navigating low water, limited water resources is a huge topic hmm. um, for sure. And it's a great question that you bring up. And I cannot emphasize enough water conservation just in a general everyday as part of your routine kind of sense. I think that should just be a part of our lives to turn the water off when you're brushing your teeth or, you know, be conscious about it when you're doing the dishes or, you know, space out your water usage between the dishwasher and washing machine and bathing and things like that. So in hmm. times of drought, it's really hard, you know, water conservation only goes so far if there's enough water to begin with. So I haven't heard of too many wells like widespread drought, a lot of wells going dry at one time. Luckily our water system is always cycling and we have, you know, rain and snow melt refilling the groundwater and the aquifers surrounding us. So I, I wouldn't see it as a... A fear factor. No, no, there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's not, there's not something you can, you can mitigate is, is hmm. lack of water. But what, what we can do is be smart with the water usage now and what we do have. Let me, let me dive in. It's like, what do you think the average cost to put a well is? And here in Evergreen or in the mountains. Yeah, yeah, so wells, and I didn't work for a well driller, but they do usually drill them per foot. So you pay a, a, a price per foot. Well can cost a couple tens of thousands of dollars, say maybe 20 to 30,000 to, to drill and construct a well. A pump system, it really depends on the depth of that well. So that, you know, if you have a deeper well, you're gonna need a larger pump size that can deliver more water up to 15 gallons a minute. A larger pump, more pipe, more wire, more materials, more equipment, it's gonna be more expensive. So a pump system, brand new, might be five to 15,000. Our suite of water quality testing for a solid package, a couple hundred dollars, let's say maybe $500 for like a, like a very comprehensive package. Some of the more basic packages can be, you know, 30 to 150. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be a pretty large investment putting in a new hmm. well and uh, something that you need, you know. Gotta have water. You gotta have gotta water. Gotta have water. Yep. I've been saying $10,000 for 100 feet. I heard that somewhere. Is I can that... see that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not like lying. Said, not in, <laughs> not total. I was more on the, here's your well's already constructed. I'm gonna put the pump system mm -hmm. in for you. So I, would, I didn't work too much on the well drilling side. So it can definitely vary, but I, I'd want to say, yeah, 30 grand for like a ballpark, 500 mm -hmm. foot deep well. Yeah. Yeah. I get this call a lot. Found a piece of property. I want to build on it. One, you get a codes and things like that. But the, one of the big codes with an area like uh, Jefferson County is you have to have your, your septic and your well like in place to be able to like live on the property. So that is one of like the big unknown costs, mm -hmm. like walking into it. Cause you're not exactly sure how deep you have to go. Yeah. That sucks. I yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, you're not sure. So the first thing would be securing that permit. And yeah, it's hard to estimate costs because mm. it could be anywhere from 200, maybe up towards of a thousand feet deep up here in the mountains. Yeah. Is the range Gulp. that I've seen. Yeah. Uh huh. That's actually a very big point here, Sean, is when you're building here in Jefferson County is you have to have a septic permit, you have to have a well permit, and you have to have a driveway permit. All of those have to be established before you can even break ground. Cool, yeah, and we don't wanna like deter you guys. We love helping you out, uh, like finding a property uh, to build on. 
However, typically when we go through this, normally we find that people are, are gonna find something with already an existing well, existing septic. Not only the well, but the septic is gonna determine where you can put the house and where your driveway comes in. So there's just like a lot of additional var variables that you know I get people to throw up their arms and like, you know what, let's just buy something. Even if you like knock it down, you have all these other things like already in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you have an existing well on the property, I'd say have like hire a professional to come out and take a look at that well. Yeah, I definitely, definitely would take a look at that well before you count on it and make sure that the quantity and maybe the quality is there before you plan a whole home around it. Yeah, before you start that build, yeah. mm -hmm. check it out. All right, Nicole, give us some well horror stories. Oh gosh. Like, unpermitted wells, not a big deal, are they? I yeah, mean, unpermitted wells happen. You know, prior okay. to 1972, wells dis didn't actually necessarily need to be permitted mm -hmm. within the state, and new regulations were put into place that required a permit. Right. But um, they exist. A lot of mm -hmm. them are called gallery wells. They're maybe hand dug, maybe 15. Hand dug? Hand dug, yeah. 15 feet or less. They could be upwards of four to six feet in diameter. Okay. Lined by bricks and maybe have a little. Oh, they're not them. hundreds of feet. Deep. No, they're not okay, hand, yeah, yeah. hundreds of feet. They're okay. they're wider and they're and they're shallower, much shallower. Okay. So like you're talking like Cinderella story, like a bucket well. Basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All Those, right. These do exist. I've seen yeah, quite a few of them. No, I did have a homeowner that they purchased the property because the well was fine. They just didn't have like a ton of backstory mm -hmm. on the well because it was before, but it's like pump rate looked good. Everything looked good. And so it's like, you don't have to get permanent. It's just like, you don't know the origin story. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend getting it permitted. You can permit it as a historical use well. There's certain paperwork to file with the state mm -hmm. um, just to let them know that like, yep, this well exists and it's constructed and maintained properly so that we're not risking our groundwater and maybe introducing surficial contaminants to an open well like that. So just making sure and you need some really basic information to permit that well, like um, approximately how deep it is, if you knew the date of construction or approximately when it was constructed and maybe who drilled it. Mm -hmm. So pretty basic paperwork and a well service company can help you fill that out. Wait, did you just tell me, but like the, the, the lazy person to me is like, I have like this under the radar well. <laughs> is that not good for me as a homeowner? Um, I'd say maybe the transfer of sale. I'd feel like you need some kind of paperwork to transfer that sure. ownership of it. Um, I'm very by the book, so I was I like, know, let's get I it know. registered. Fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. It's our little um, type A. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's let's hit him with some like horror stories. Like have you seen like yeah, what's the worst well thing you've seen? Oh like, gosh. Have you found things in <laughs> keep, keep a lid on your storage tanks. Keep a lid on the storage tanks. Keep a lid on them. What was inside this storage tank, you think? There you might have been some um, biological material from rodents. Oh, and I thought it was like from a disgruntled neighbor. No, the, <laughs> the rodents themselves. Okay. And if those tanks are connected to your plumbing, and so you may see things come out of your plumbing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Bits and pieces. Some people. Uh. That's gross. I have had some people freak out because they like they learn the concept of like a leech field, and then their well is right there. They're like, is that a problem? That I'm like, my bio waste is going out into the water as well. I thought it was 200 feet, uh, but it may just be 100 feet. It needs to be a specific distance uh, that's actually in your well permit um, from your leach field. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been established probably by different studies of how long it takes for a leachate to desorb or mm -hmm. yeah, become cleaner in a mm -hmm. sense. But as long as that distance is far enough away, you should be okay. Should and be. then uh, if you can place the well up gradient, if you, if you see, you know, a general surface water flow in a certain direction, perhaps groundwater is flowing in a similar direction. If you can put up gradient of your, of your cyst, of your um, septic system in your leach field, that would be preferred. Yeah. 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 You're freaking me out a little bit. No, yeah. no, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's not. No, it's like just thinking, kidding. Everyone's just thinking. Yeah, about your well drillers well. should be well mm -hmm. aware of where the septic system is and be able to locate your well in the appropriate area. Well aware. That's well one aware. we haven't well used aware. yet. Well, I think we hit our list here. Anything else that you think that people should know about, other than? These guys make videos like this all the time, and if you're interested in learning more and staying up to date on the latest videos we put out, hit subscribe and then hit the like and hit the bell. And you'll be notified each time we put up a new video. No, just make sure you're reading. There's great resources available on the Colorado Division of Water Resources and the, the Colorado um, Department of Public Health and Environment has some great resources on water quality, water testing, 
Um, Division of Water Resources has information on the well, so you can always check out those sources for the latest and greatest information on, on wells. As well as these guys, they'll probably have some updated as videos. As well. Yes, right. as well. Okay, real quick, hot take. Um, Aquaman or Waterworld, which video oh was better? My goodness. Probably Aquaman. Cool. All right, well, thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate yeah, you. Thank you, thanks, guys. Thanks, Nicole. And Appreciate if yeah, you guys have me. questions, put them in the comments. And if you have questions for her, we'll, we'll kick them over to her and get you guys answers. Absolutely. Bye. Peace. See ya. Bye.